Welcome to Brevis Talk. The talks you are about to hear will be honest, revealing, and unfiltered. Join us as your host, Pastor Wayne Whiteside, lifts the lid of silence and has conversations about mental illness and health in the church. The goal here is simple. It is to help someone along this journey of life who is struggling. It is to tell the truth to the unsuspecting, and it is to lighten the load of a fellow traveler. This podcast is for informational purposes only and is not intended to serve as medical advice or to replace consultation with your physician or mental health professional. If you are experiencing a medical crisis, call 911 or go to the nearest emergency room. Now, here's your host, Pastor Wayne. You have now entered another Brevis Talk as we go into a maximum security prison, and today we will be on death row. Let me read some verses of Scripture that are very pertinent to our story today. Hebrews chapter 3, and this is actually, these these verses are a repeat from Psalm 95. Hebrews chapter 7 and following says, Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you hear His voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. On the day of testing, in the wilderness, where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my works for forty years. Therefore I was provoked with that generation, and said they always go astray in their hearts, and they have not known my ways. So I swore in my anger, they will not enter my rest. I was asked to visit a young man who had a execution date, uh, did not know him, and I found him to be a very angry man with a belief system of being a militant. I spoke to him about the gospel, and it seemed that he had no interest in the gospel, but I did uh, establish enough of a connection that I did visit him for several, several months. I asked him, what do you believe? He said, well, I'll never believe in the white man's God. He said, I believe that if you're strong, you can conquer the weak. And if you're strong, God is with you, and that is why you can conquer the weak. He went on to tell me that he was God's judge. He said, if God wants to get rid of someone, He quite often has them cross paths with me. He bragged about killing several people that he had not been uh, held accountable for. And he said, I like killing. I enjoy killing people. And I never killed anyone that didn't deserve to be killed. I said, well, that's a crazy thing to say because, first of all, I am quite aware that these people, some of these people at least, In your case file, you never knew them. So how could they be someone that you know deserved killing? You didn't know them. They were complete strangers. He said, I'm telling you, if I killed them, they needed to be killed. And on and on, he would rant and rant and rant and rant against the prison system, rant against society, rant against his family. And I would just sit there and listen. And when he would get out of breath, I would say, well, you know, God loves you. Jesus Christ died for your sins. Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven, and you're running out of time. I told him about eternity. Heaven is real. Hell is real. Heaven is forever. Hell is forever. He said, well, I guess according to your belief system, I'm going to hell. He said, but I assure you, I am not going to hell. I am God's judge and God's avenger. He gave me strength over certain people so that I could deal with them in this life. I asked him one day, one visit, I said, how did you come to get all this hate in your heart? And he was taken aback just for a moment. He said, you think I'm full of hate? I said, no, no, I don't think you're full of hate. I know you're full of hate. Every time we get together, you rage about something. You are an angry man, and I just want to understand from whence it's come. 
He told me a little bit about his childhood. He had a good childhood. He admitted he had a good childhood. I asked him if he had been physically or otherwise abused. He assured me he had not. And so I had to come back to the conclusion that whoever he had affiliated with and began to have constant company or fellowship with had persuaded him to have all this hate. Well, I'd like to tell you that uh, he humbled himself, that he listened to the message, and that he was saved and he's a Christian. And after his execution, I'm sure that he is walking the streets of gold in heaven. I cannot tell you that. I can tell you that he went out into eternity with unbelief in his heart, a smirk on his face, and anger in his soul. I remember reading his last words. They were angry words. Angry, angry words. I did have something that happened in our visit with him, and I don't think he ever lied to me. I think he was a truth teller as far as what he believed and what he perceived. He uh, confided in me that he was going to hurt someone. I said, what do you mean? He said, I'm going to take someone with me. Before they kill me, I'm going to kill one of them. I said, how on earth could you do that? You are heavily secured. He said, well, I've, I've got a little surprise, and uh, I'm quick, and I can act before they can react. And he smiled at me, and he said, I promise you, you when you read about me, they'll kill me, but I will have gotten one of them. I said, oh, man, don't do that. There's absolutely no reason why you should hurt someone. He said, well, wait a minute. I told you I was God's judge, and I've, I'm here to judge at least one more person. I said, oh, please don't do that. Please don't hurt anyone. I said, these officers, they are husbands and wives, fathers and mothers. They're someone's children, grandchildren. They're, uh, they have siblings, people that love them, and they're just trying to do a job. They're just trying to pay the electric bill. And no one has done anything to you. So you need to stop that talk, and you need to stop uh, whatever you're planning. He smiled at me, and he said, you'll read about it. I said, all right, so that uh, you don't think I'm a tattletale. I am going to warn the authorities concerning what you've said. I don't want you to think I went behind your back. I'm going to tell them that you have said this. He said, I have something in my cell, and they will never, never find it. Do what you have to do. After the visit was over, I stopped by the warden's office and asked to speak to the warden at that time. And he came out. Actually, I went into his office, and he said, can I help you? And I said, yes. I said, I just had a visit with, uh, we'll call him Adrian for today. Uh, Adrian, and he has assured me he's going to hurt one of your officers, and he's going to get one of your officers before he is executed. The warden said, he's secure. He's locked down. I'm not worried about that. I said, I think you should be worried. He has never lied to me. He's a very dangerous person. He's a very angry person. And I just don't want someone getting hurt. He said, I assure you that we are watching him. There is absolutely nothing he can do to hurt anyone. Well, I went on home and I received a phone call within about 48 hours. It was the warden. He said, Thank you for stopping by. He said, after you visited with me, I got to thinking, you know, it won't hurt to check. We need to search his cell and look again. And he said, I sent my best people down there, and they covered every, every inch of that cell. And we found a tool or a weapon eight inches long, sharpened, and he, in fact, probably would have hurt one of our officers, and I just want to thank you for stopping by. And I said, Warden, I want to thank you for listening to me and believing that I was not an alarmist for alarm's sake, 
that I believed that he would hurt someone. He had assured me he would. He had never lied to me. Now, maybe there's someone here listening, and, you know, it will surprise you, listeners, that there are people would put a snitch designation on me. I absolutely will not wear that. I told this man I was going to tell, and I believe that he was going to hurt someone. So if that makes me a snitch, in your mind, your eyes, so be it. But I am going to do right when I know to do right. And I have no moral qualms about that. Well, they found that shank and removed it from his cell and put him in more secure means. And he wasn't able to hurt someone. And he died about a week later, an angry, angry man. I asked myself, what could you have done differently? What could you have said differently that might have made a difference in this man's eternity? Friend, I have talked to myself about that. I have questioned, I have asked, and I can't come up with a thing that I could have said other than what I'd said. As you've heard me say before, it seemed to me like he was hell-bent on being hell-bound. Not everyone I witnessed to in the outside world and not any, everyone I witnessed to in the inside world comes to faith in Christ. I am simply the paper boy. I throw it up on the porch and individuals can ignore it. They can throw it back, I suppose. Or they can read it and perhaps receive it as the truth that it is. The Bible says that if the Son sets you free, you shall be free indeed. I promised you in the telling of these stories that I would not cherry pick and tell you wonderful stories each and every time about men who have been redeemed by the Lord. Been many success stories. And there have been many stories that I can simply say that I was obedient, but they did not come to faith in Christ. But you and I must herald and tell the gospel to each and every person that we come in contact with. We are to witness with our words, we are to witness with our lives, and we are to be consistent Christ lovers. Christ is to be glorified in our lives. I'll be back with you with another story in a short, short time. God bless you, and thank you for listening. And that concludes our broadcast today. Please don't forget to subscribe to the podcast through Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Plus, check us out at our Facebook page or at brevistalk.com and take a look at our blog. And remember, be kind. Always be kind.